Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This year is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello! podcast land i am so sorry about that little glitch there i was messing with my headphones and i clicked the mouse and the mouse was right on the play button so it stopped and it clicked and then i clicked it back it's okay it's a small little glitch and we are here we are live it is officially 801 technically we should have been here at eight but it is okay god ain't gonna judge me because i'm late let me say this to you again. God was always late. Or was he? Good example. <clears throat> Jesus, uh, Martha was summoned from, Martha summoned Jesus and said that you need to go right now to Mary's because her brother Lazarus is dying. And so what did Jesus do? Well, Jesus waited had dinner with his disciples, but waited, and waited, and had more dinner with his disciples. Finally, four days later, he, he decided, oh, we'll go to Mary's house. And he gets there, and here's Mary and Martha mourning over the tomb of Lazarus, dead by now. And uh, so Martha and Mary said, look, if you'd have been here earlier, he'd have been alive. If you'd have been here four days early, he'd have been alive, but he stinketh now. He stinketh. He begins to rot. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. What happens? Lazarus' body, they said, roll the stone away. He says, roll the stone away. They rolled it away, and here comes Lazarus. Like a mummy, all wrapped up in mummy clothes. He comes out and they you go take off the rags. They take off all the rags and there is Lazarus. Just imagine up at the, at the Last Supper eating fried chicken with Moses. And uh Yes, eating fried chicken with Moses and Noah. The next day I gotta go, guys. I'm being called by Jesus. Sorry, bye. I'll eat some more with you later. <laughs> So, <clears throat> what I'm basically saying is, is that even though God was four days late, he was still on time because Lazarus was still alive. So, even though God is four days late, he's always on time. So, even though I might be a minute or two late, it don't matter. God was always late. When was God ever on time to anything? Ask that question yourself. When was God on time to anything? Let me get my water real quick. <clears throat> you give me a time when you can see in Scripture where God was on time for anything. Most of the stuff he was late for in the first place. He was always late. God is never on time for anything. It's like me. I'll never be on time to my funeral. I'll be late to my own funeral. I'm so sorry. I had to get dressed up with the coroner. So yes, God is always late. There's an old song that goes, even though he's four days late, he's always on time. And it's the truth. It's the absolute 100% truth that God is always late. Now, does that mean that since God was always late that you can be late to your job? Oh, no. I'm not saying that. But just because I'm late a little bit to the podcast doesn't mean anything. Because God was late. To just about everything in God's word. Everything that happened, God was always late. But it is okay. Because <clears throat> you know what? Because he's God. It has to be okay. So... I lose my train of thought. So with that thought being said, hey, I'm here, you're here, and we are live, live, live. 
So, <clears throat> what's up in your lives? How are you doing today? We got a brand new message from Dr. Scott Mullen, our host for Wednesday nights outside the classroom Wednesdays. And it's official. It's outside the classroom Wednesdays, baby. And we are going to have some fun here on the show. And this is not one of those messages where, you know, I got it from Evangel, I chopped, I cut, and stuff like that. This is a hand-picked message that he preached himself at his house just for DGIF. And this is very special to you guys because you're the ones that only get to hear this message. Nobody else in the world, not even Evangel, is going to get to hear this message. Only you will. That's how special it is. So, without, let me put my microphone down just a tad bit. There we go. Without further ado, let's get into a few but brief announcements. Starting with number one, you can always go to communitycloud222 at gmail.com, spelled C O M M. U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D-222 at G-M-A-I-L dot C-O-M. And you know what you can do right there? Well, you can send me all your prayer requests. Even if you want to shout to you on the podcast, send me your first name, your city, and your state. And I'll shout out to you on TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, guys, be aware you can call us here at one 302 Again, that's 1-302-448-TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, also, also be vitally, vitally, vitally aware that you guys, <clears throat> we're doing this this week, outside the classroom. Wednesdays today is our day for Dr. Scott's message to go forth. So enjoy this week's episode of Outside the Classroom Wednesdays. Where we take the gospel to outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. Be aware tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow is kingdom collaboration tomorrow. It's official kingdom collaboration Thursdays tomorrow. Now, if you didn't notice it, I did a message show on Tuesday instead of Monday. Monday I was tired. Dead tired. And I couldn't. I couldn't uh, do any messages. I was dead tired because I could walk, couldn't even walk straight. I was falling over. I was so tired. So tomorrow, though, is going to be... So I did three shows in a row, which is fine. But tomorrow is Kingdom Collaboration Thursday. So I hope you thoroughly enjoy Pastor Lance's message on tomorrow because I know that after his air message aired last week, we got over 71 or so extra downloads. Where is my phone so I can show you the exacts? The exacts, I call them. And it truly was truly amazing. I didn't expect it to happen. He talked about marriage stuff. And nine times out of ten, when most people talk about marriage stuff, they don't like the idea of what the discussion is. And so they just don't like listening to anything that has to do with marriage, per se. But... It went on really good with uh, Pastor Lance. So we're going to, uh, let's do statistics. There we go. <clears throat> See more. Now here is last week's 253 for the whole month so far. Here is last week. Let's do this one. Last week, 101, 104 last week, and our biggest one was October 22nd, which was 70 downloads. Now, October 22nd was, let's close this out. Sorry, guys, if I sound like I'm a little sniffling over here, I kind of am. Not sure what's going on. <clears throat> I just know that I, I got a lot of stuff draining. So October 22nd was... It was on a... I wish it'd show me. There we go. October 22nd was on a... 
Saturday. So <clears throat> the 20th, which was Thursday, was the message that uh, Pastor Lance preached, and you guys seemed to love it. So you loved his message, and good. I'm glad you did. It is just a blessing that you can love something that people are doing. But no, you guys loved it, and you guys downloaded the episode. So, hey, thank you. We appreciate you guys. Even he does. He just said this. <clears throat> I'll read you one of his messages. Because I, I texted him and said, I said, uh, I have some great news for you, Pastor Lance. 70 extra people tuned in to last Thursday's Kingdom Collaboration episode. Praise God. Gave him a thumbs up. He says, Amen. That is great news. Thanks for all you do. So, thank you guys for all you do. Because, see, we appreciate you. <clears throat> we vitally appreciate you because, <clears throat> excuse me, if I didn't have an audience, I wouldn't have a show. Yes, I know Dr. Scott said preach it to the views, preach it to the views. But you know what? Without you guys, I don't have a show. Because I can't have a show without listeners. What am I going to do? Talk to myself? I can't do that. I do that a lot already. Sometimes before I have my coffee in the morning, when I wake up and I look in the mirror, I have a full conversation with myself. And sometimes I say, man, you're ugly. <laughs> and it's the truth. No, I'm just kidding. But no, I can't talk to myself and not have any listeners. So I choose, I love you guys, and I thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode. It is absolutely 100% phenomenal that you guys tune into this week's episode. So, with that being said, look forward to Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays tomorrow. Also look forward to this week's episode of Worship Saturdays, where we do nothing but praise, prayer, and worship. Grab your favorite drink, relax in your favorite lounge chair, and enjoy the fabulous music we here have on the show. Be aware the rumble is going to happen, just not yet. We got more messages coming from Dr. Scott, and that's going to be a true blessing. So look forward to the rumble, just not yet. Not for a little while. Actually, a long while. It'll be maybe a year, year and a half before it actually starts, or a little more. But do look forward to it, though. Also, guys, be aware. Be, be vitally aware. You can download this app. It's called Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. And guess what you can do right there on that app? Well, you can listen, like, subscribe. You can download each and every single episode so you can listen to each and every episode like subscribe and comment to each and every episode and download each and every episode you can also connect with us through facebook twitter and email yes email it's at the bottom right hand corner of any page of podcast portal again spelled p-o-d-c-a-s-t space p-o-r-t-a-l available on the google play store the available on the google play store the amazon app store and the aptoid market just download it Download Podcast Portal, go to the bottom right-hand corner of any page, and click on the email button. It looks like an envelope. Then click on your email client, click Always, type your email, hit Send. It seems like a lot, but when you hit that Always button, it instantly takes you back to that email right straight there. So all you have to do is click the email button, type in your email, and hit Send, and you're done. You're good to go. Also, you can DM us on, DM us on Twitter. And <clears throat> I'm going to get it situated again. I'm going to do, I'm going to start with this episode. So <clears throat> I'm going to start with Monday's episode, Tuesday's episode, this episode, King Collaboration, and so forth. And we're going to be updating the blog again, but you can view everything we got on the Facebook page. We got the blog, we got pictures that we post. Whatever it is that you want to do on that, on the podcast, on the uh, Facebook page, you can do it straight from the app itself. And you can message us through uh, Messenger on the app. Just click on the message button at the top of the Facebook mes Facebook page. You can message us on Messenger. Right next to it, it, says it has a phone handle. 
So just click on that, takes you to your phone dialer, and you're instantly calling us straight here at TGIF, straight from the app. Also, guys, <coughs> we got the blog postings and everything else that you can view. Also, you can, on our, one of my favorite parts of it, not the most favorite, but one of my favorite parts is the play buttons page, where you can click on any one of the four play buttons and listen to the, listen to what it produces. So we got four play buttons you can listen to. Number one, 95 Fight the Fish from Cleveland, Ohio. Two, KJIC out of Texas. Three, my former church, Evangel Christian Churches. And four, my former church, Portage Community Chapel, where you can view whatever they got going on. So for 95 Fight the Fish and KJIC, just click their little button and it plays the radio station. For Evangel, click the Evangel button. It says Evangel right on there. And you're instantly uh, playing and seeing their YouTube videos, and with the Portage Community Abstract Color button, it looks like a bunch of colors, blues, browns, greens, oranges, reds, yellows. Click on that, it takes you to their About Vimo page. Click on where it says Video, and then click on a video that does not say Upcoming, and then hit the Play button, and you're good to see and watch their videos. But Evander, just click on one of their videos. Once you click the button, click one of their videos, and you're playing it instantly. So... That is the Play Buttons page. You used to be able to do a Google search result at the bottom of the Play Buttons page, but you no longer can. I'm working on that idea back into it. I liked it, but you can't right now. But when I get done, you should be able to. But for right now, you can go to the bottom of the Facebook or the bottom of the Twitter page, delete what's in there, and then put in your own very own search result like Google.com, Bing.com, or wherever you want to search, or www.water.com, or when we get this finally situated, you can type in www.godforeverministries.com. That's www.colon forward slash forward slash http www.god capital god f o u r no capital g o d capital f o R E V E R Ministries.com. So go to GodForeverMinistries.com. You'll be able to view all of our stuff on the website as well. We're looking to get that. We're getting that done soon. We got the domain and everything. We're just we're just waiting on a quick. We're just waiting on a few little edit pieces to get that going. So that's GodForeverMinistries.com, where we are now going to be real soon a division of God Forever Ministries. God Forever Ministries is basically TGIF. But TGIF is a uh, is a subsequent to God Forever Ministries. God Forever Ministries is our actual ministry that we do on a regular, every single day basis. And it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful what we can do for God Forever Ministries. So, it's going to be a true blessing. So, um, yeah, go to my own the Facebook or Twitter page and do a Google search result. Also, be aware my absolute 100% favorite part of the app is the portal chat feature where you can chat with whoever owns the app. If 500 people own this app, you can chat with 500 people around the world. You don't even need an account to chat with them. All you need is to download the app. Put in any single name that you want. You can do like Susie Smith, John Doe, or Joe Blow for all we care. As long as it's your name and you're not some kind of uh, person who wants to catfish, then you're fine. Put in your name, Susie, Joe, John, whatever your case is. Put your name in there and then hit continue and you're instantly chatting on the app. Now, you can send pictures too. But you have to have an account for pictures. Only because I don't want some weird people coming on here going, hey, and they don't got an account. That prevents them, that prevents like uh, robots or anything, not robots, but bots, from sending inappropriate pictures. And it's not even a real person. Even if it is a real person, I still don't want it on the app. Because it's a family oriented Christian app that does not involve that garbage. <clears throat> so, to, to take a picture, first you have to have an account. Log in. 
But to take a picture, take a picture of your camera, save it to your camera roll, go into the app, click on the little camera button at the bottom, and then click upload picture, select the picture you want to upload, and then hit send, and it's that good, you're good to go. So you can also do all kinds, you can PM us on here. So just be aware, just because you can PM everyone on here and they say they're Christian, doesn't mean that they are. So just be careful because you you never know who's out there when you're PMing somebody privately, you never know who they are. So just be careful. And if you find anything that you don't like or you feel uncomfortable, about, just come to me and I'll let you know what's going on. And I'll, and I'll stop that from happening. Whether I have to warn them, block them once, block them for a week, or block them for eternity, I'll fix it somehow, some way. And there's no way for anybody to get into the back door. The back door is real, and you, and if you have the link, you can get right into the back door. But no one can get the link, so no one can go into the back door. So we, you can't do the back door idea, and it's safer for you guys. With that being said, with that being said, that's Podcast Portal. Again, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Available on Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. If you have any questions, please contact us here on the show. We'll be glad, we'll be glad to give you as much help as we can. With that being said, ask your Alexa device guys, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. We also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal, and she'll say welcome to, welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our announcements for today. Let's get into our first song. And our first song is Clean, Clean Heart by none other than Pastor Evangelist Duffy Smith. Enjoy Clean, Clean Heart.
There you go, guys. That was I Do Declare by none other than Pastor Evangelist and my guest on the show, Dudley Smith. Let's get into Dr. Scott's message. And this is going to be a good one. I've never heard this yet. But this one is called Take Four, Rest More by none other than Dr. Scott Mullen from Agape Worldwide Ministries Evangel Christian Churches and the IAC, which I am a part of, and the wife will be soon. Enjoy. Take four. Rest more. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Chaplain, once again. And let us pray tonight, Father. We give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. As I begin the teaching, the word that you've given me tonight, I ask you to anoint the lips of clay and the coals of the brazen altar. Tonight we choose to praise you and we choose to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I just want to take a moment and thank Chaplain Andrew and his wife, Kim, and my wife, Pastor Pam. We've had some glitches in this program, and we were able to overcome the glitches so we can get back to the recordings. And I apologize if I cough a little bit tonight. I'm all coming off of a little bit of a case of bronchitis, but I thank God I have caught my healing. Tonight's message is entitled, Take Four and Rest more. I'm going to talk about the basic steps to rest. You know, our society, we're so busy. Uh, for those of you old enough to remember the Andy Griffith Show, it's one of my favorites growing up. Small town, Mayberry. Five o'clock, sidewalks roll up. Everybody goes home, has dinner, sit out on your porch for a few minutes, read the paper. Everybody's in bed by nine o'clock. But could you imagine? An airplane flying overhead, and I I live close to the airport, and we get a lot of air traffic coming in, and I watch different patterns, and sometimes they cut real tight over our house, making the turn towards the airport, and sometimes they're low enough you can almost see the treads on the tire. But can you imagine a small town, and and the airline comes down, and it crashes, and explodes in the field, and, and debris everywhere, and luggage everywhere, and, and don't mean to be crude, but bodies, body parts everywhere, and all of this, and responders showing up from ev- all kinds of communities, and, and I teach, as I teach chaplains, I also talk about critical incident stress management training, and we're trained to work alongside first responders, so you bring in chaplains, you bring in groups from all over, and, and, and can you imagine all that help uh, happening, and if firefighters standing by and they're trying to control the outburst of the flames and the police are trying to keep people back when trying to keep control and, and all of a sudden it's 5 o'clock. Can you imagine a small town saying, all right, 5 o'clock, roll up the sidewalks. No. They're going to keep going and they're going to push through. Just like 9-11, they continued and continued and continued for as long as it took to try to find whoever they could find. They're going to continue to go and to go and to go. Sometimes our lives are so busy that way that we end up with a spiritual fatigue and a heaviness so great and loss is so staggering. It takes time and an in-depth probe rather than running from our scene of sorrow. Sometimes we have to just do like David said and wait upon the Lord. We have to sit down and allow God to minister to us. You imagine the the workers, they're weary and they're tired. They're discouraged and they're fatigued. They're waiting for someone to relieve them. In our spiritual walk, we don't have someone to relieve us. I I thank God for, for being able to work with Chaplain Andrew and and walking through this, putting this program together and loading it in, and all the, the help that God gave me with with uh, Andrew's wife, Kim, and my wife, Pam, and getting this back up and loaded and going. But I'm going to talk about four ways that we can rest to the Lord. Tonight we're going to look at, number one, praise. We understand that all good gifts come from God. While God walked with Adam in the garden each evening, one of the chief lessons was instruction in praise. When we learn, I I love Sunday mornings, we come in a time of praise and worship and the praise that we get excited, we clap, we dance, we shout, 
And then we work our way into the praise or to the worship where we come and we get on our face before God. David said that when he praised, he was so excited, he took off his outer coat and he walked the streets, he ran the streets, he danced in the streets and people looked at him like he was a fool. Like there's something wrong with him. His wife was embarrassed at what he was doing. Well, you know what? It's all right that we get embarrassed before others and do what God wants us to do. We get happy and praise and we can walk with God. And Ephesians 1.12, that we should be to the praise of his glory. While God may have been teaching Adam how to care for the land and increase his fullness, no doubt, his first taught him thankfulness and praise. We need to begin our day. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for allowing me to put my feet on the ground. And we need to end our day. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to put my head on this pillow. And we begin to praise him. God sought to make his nation of Israel a kingdom of priests that may offer up the praise God desires. Look back in Genesis. He walked and he fellowshiped with Adam. He desires to fellowship with us. First Peter two nine says we're a chosen generation, we're a royal a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the what praises of Him who has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. We have a lot to be thankful for. We just had a lot of construction in our city, in our side of the end of the city, where they've done sidewalk repairs. If the sidewalk was too high and a stumble effect, they put a, a dot on it, a mark on it, and they cut it out and they leveled that piece of sidewalk. Our house is right next to the alley. And they came by and I caught the city out there and he tagged part of the, the approach of the alley, which was higher than my part of the sidewalk. And then he put a mark on my sidewalk. I said, sir, my sidewalk's even with the rest of the sidewalk and the two coming from my house to it. It's your approach is too high. So he said, we're going to take this off of the list. Now, they were charging $300 a square. It would have cost me $300 to have that piece of sidewalk taken up and replaced. But I stood there when they were taking up the part of the alley and I stopped to make sure they didn't take it up. Saved God saved me three hundred dollars. Well, they have finished the project. The the part of the alley they put on is level with the sidewalk now. It's perfectly across. They finished the street that was crumbling in front of our house, and we're praising the Lord that now we have access without crumbles, and we have a reason to be happy. I don't park my truck across the street sometimes in the dark and walk and hope I didn't step in a, a, pro, uh, a part that was broken up in the street. So we have a right to praise him that now that that's been fixed and I didn't have to put out any money. That's a good point to shout at. God's always sought and is today still seeking those who offer him praise. Why is praising God so important? It's not because God is so self-centered that he creates beings to continue to lift him up rather praising is God's plan of sharing and renewing spiritual life <clears throat> I'll say that again it's praising God is, is part of his plan of sharing and renewing a spiritual life through his son we get to praise him by the power of the Holy Spirit through his son Jesus who sits at the right hand thus praise is man offering the indwelling spirit of life back to God in worship only as man offers praise does he have a ministry to his fellow man and to the world at large. And God always gives an abundant measure. We never run out of a chance and an opportunity to praise him. It's important to keep our stream of praise free from obstruction. Have you ever noticed that in church you could be worshiping, you could be praising, and somebody wants to tap you on the shoulder because they want to get inside that part of the pew or the chairs. It seems we get distracted more there. I make it a point to put my phone on vibrate sometimes in a whole other room when I want to take time with the Lord. Because I want the freedom to praise Him and not be distracted by my phone. And the enemy will make that thing ring. 
When we begin to pray, so we begin to worship, we can release stress. Now, I'm only two miles from work. I come out at work in the, in the morning. I work the night shift. I come out 7.38, depending what time I get out of work, come out in the morning. And I only have a two-mile drive home. I had the radio on. I'm listening to worship. Sometimes I park, and I sit and listen to another two or three songs just to wind down to let go of, of the night. Physicians say ill will, fear, tension, worry, or hate can upset, upset the entire chemical balance in our bodies, causing sickness. So when we can let go of fear, tension, worry, we can let go of hate, fatigue, we can help our bodies heal themselves. Because the opposite is also true. Praise can bring healing. I can leave work at work. I can take a few moments to praise the Lord and enjoy the Lord. And when I give a gracious uh, gift of thanks in all things, it causes me to function better during the day. Yes, I get frustrated at work. We get frustrated with co-workers. My goodness, we get frustrated at home. We get frustrated with our, our spouses, with sometimes with ourselves when we learn to take time to praise we can release and when we praise we receive the threefold area of rest in our spirit our soul and our body so number one is praise number two is forgiveness Another step to rest is forgiveness. Unforgiveness and weariness are bedfellows. I will say that again. Unforgiveness and weariness are bedfellows. There's no deep rest for the unforgiving. Nothing drains one's energy, crippling a spirit like nursing a grudge or courting an unforgiving spirit. If we have unforgiveness, we need to ask God, where, where is unforgiveness in my heart? And if I have it, we need to let it go. Forgive the one who has hurt. We don't have to be best friends with them, but we have to forgive them. And that brings a release, and that brings a healing into our bodies. We forgive others because Christ forgave us. Can you imagine Jesus hanging on Calvary? And he's taking the sins on the of the world on his shoulders, and all of a sudden he says, nah, "No, I don't like that, Doctor Scott. I'm not taking his sins. Uh, no, I don't like Herker Where I'm not taking his sins. I don't like, and you could put your name there. Mm hmm. Okay, you took a moment to put your name there. Can you imagine Jesus saying, "I don't like you"? No, he took the forgiveness for everybody. He forgave our sins. Paul says, Be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, excuse me, has forgiven you. As in Ephesians four thirty two. Be what kind one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. Yes, we're gonna have disagreements. My dad was was funny, growing up he would he was a pastor and he would tell the church, he said, in our house, we have discussion. Sometimes we have much discussion. And sometimes we have much, much, much discussion. Which is really saying, this is the way, this way of saying we argue and we would get loud. But when all was said and done, we would love one another, forgive one another, and go on. We do not deserve to be forgiven. Not one of us. But Christ chose, and since we receive that kind of justification, just as if I have never sinned, and just as I have never been bad, and I'm forgiven, we we don't we receive that kind of justification, of forgiveness, but we don't deserve it. But because God loves us so much, He gives that to us, and He asks us to forgive others in the same way that we have been forgiven. At times, some say, I would forgive you, but you just can't understand how deeply I have been wronged. Maybe you have said that. I forgive so-and-so, but you don't know how bad they hurt me. 
how bad have we hurt Jesus? I don't go around saying I'm a sinner saved by grace. I say I was once a sinner, and now I'm saved. And now I'm a Christian who battles sin. And you have to know that grieves the Holy Spirit that when we sin, and we all do, when we ask forgiveness as he forgives, he puts it in the sea, in the depths of the sea. When we are surrounded with people who nurse this crippled concept, our streets are filled with weary people who would use its excuse. Bars are crammed with people who have been wronged and are trying to wash away their hurts by means that enlarges their hurts. We have hurts in churches, workplaces. Wherever we go, we experience hurts. When we learn to lay them at the foot of the cross and we learn to give them to God and we let them go. Now, we may remember them, but we don't have to harbor them. We don't have to dwell on them. We don't have to let them be in us continuously. Because they cannot forgive their weary in running from one problem to another. When we learn to forgive, we let that problem go. Yes, the enemy will bring it up. You remember what so-and-so did to you? Yes, I do, but I have forgiven them. And that's covered under the blood of Jesus that we take authority. You might say, I can't afford to forgive. The correct reply is, I cannot afford not to forgive. We have to forgive even according to Scripture. So number one is praise. Number two is forgiveness. Number three is proper exposure. It says physical health cannot prevail for those who hover over a cesspool of most contagious bacteria on earth. I have been blessed to be in, in several foreign countries. and I was in Nigeria and Africa for three weeks and walking through the little, through the town, through the neighborhood. And the streets are just dirt streets, and they had some potholes big enough to swallow your car. I've watched them, <coughs> excuse me, to avoid the potholes, drive up on the sidewalks. But as you walk along the sidewalks along the street, then you have sidewalks going up to the individual houses. But you will see a ditch along the sidewalk. The, the sidewalk going to the house goes over that ditch, has a piece of pipe. But that ditch is full of mucky, nasty, stinky, filthy water. Part of the reason I was there, we were doing a medical missions trip. And I sat with a doctor who was in the church that we went to. And as I sat with him, he was an eye doctor, he was also a medical doctor. And people would sit, and we would pray for the people, and I could feel heat coming off their bodies. And one of the first questions, <coughs> excuse me, he would ask is, when's the last time you had a malaria shot? You watch the heads go down. It's been a while. He give prescription for a malaria shot. Because of the cesspool of, of water, mosquitoes were larger than the size of Texas. And malaria is very, very heavy there. You imagine that same type of of contagious spiritual disease that can destroy our rest and happiness, that cesspool of unforgiveness, that cesspool of hurt, if we don't let it go, if we don't receive the shot of forgiveness from our Lord and Savior, we can be destroyed. And the most deadly of all is improper thought life. And oh, the enemy can work, oh my goodness, can he work it and work it in overtime. I, I, for years, thought I was stupid because I remember uh, this came out in an inner healing session, something that was said at a parent-teacher conference was said that if he wants to act stupid, just flunk him and let him learn. And that's all I remember was, you're stupid. Coming through inner healing, the Lord brought back that time, and I can tell you who was dressed in what, but the teacher I remember her saying to my dad, with all due respect, Mr. Mullen, your son is brilliant. He's playing a game. I, I'm a middle child, and I was doing the middle child, seeking the attention 
my older brother's very talented musically. He would read book after book after book, and, and I thought, well, he's mom's favorite because he's that way. My younger brother made the baseball team. I was cut, and, and I thought, well, he's dad's favorite, and, and nobody loved me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to go eat some worms, and, and, and I thought, because nobody loved me. I was doing what I could do to seek attention. I, from, I went from a straight-A student all of a sudden down to get the C's and D's, then D's and F's. But because of that word that was put there, and I focused on the negative, it ruined, it hurt my thought life. I'm blessed to say that in 2019, I received my earned doctorate from Destiny Christian University through our school of, Destiny, uh, school of ministry in our church. I received my doctorate. Why? Because I was healed from the thought the enemy had placed there. And when we neglect our, our disciplined life, we invite disaster. When we don't take time with the Lord, we don't take time in His Word. We don't take time to praise. We don't take time to worship. We simply open the front door and say, Here, disaster, come in my house and destroy. Paul tells us how to be a successful Christian. In Philippians 4.8, the great ministry lists of six classifications of things we should think about. And for time's sake, I won't look at that. But go back and look at if, uh, Philippians 4.8. He gives us what to dwell on and is positive that we dwell if we think on these things, we protect ourselves from exposure that eliminates and eliminates the virus of what the enemy brings. We have looked at three of the four ways so far. Number one, we get back to the very basics, is praise and worship. Number two, is, un is forgiveness? Is there someone we need to forgive? Even tonight, when the teacher, when the teaching is finished, and you lay your head down and think, ask the Lord, is there someone I need to forgive? And number three was proper exposure. Proper exposure. Number four. Intercom. We have a dinner come at, at, at church, and Monday's a very busy day at our church. It's like a 12, 14-hour day <clears throat> because of school on Monday nights. And, <clears throat> and our bishop, he passed away just, just about a year ago. Our bishop was, was interesting because someone that would walk out of the office, he'd tell them to do something two minutes later on the intercom. Uh, Dr. Scott, Dr. Scott, can you come in the office, Dr. Scott? He just asked me to go somewhere. He's calling this one, he's calling that one. And through the whole church, and we get to laughing because someone working for him would get up to go to the bathroom and said, I'll be back in a minute, I have to use the restroom. And they weren't gone two steps out of the office. He's already calling them back. But that, that kind of intercom, that talking is it, disturbing. But I'm talking about the inter, I-N-T-E-R, the intercom, C-O-M of our spirit. It, it, the word intercom means intercommunication. We have to wait upon the Lord. I remember growing up in, in, our, in our churches, we stayed away from the word meditate because that was Eastern religion. But David said to meditate upon the word. I'm not sitting in the, there with my knees crossed, a little circle to my finger going, hmm. But to meditate means to look and allow the spirit. And I, I remember this from a professor I had. He said, take it from your head and put it in your spirit, down in your gut before it comes out of your mouth. So we have to, to wait upon the Lord, meditate upon the word. What does that word mean to us? And the undercom that we have is a personal personal relationship with the Lord. And if we have the personal right personal relationship with the Lord, then how do we communicate with others? I've been married. We just celebrated 32 years of marriage and and we'll say something in the house and we don't quite catch what is said. And it's how we respond with the word what. 
what did you say? Oh, I misunderstood. But we communicate the right way and we understand. We hear, then I might, I might only hear part of what my wife asked me to do. And then I don't do what she wants. But when we hear the Lord, we communicate with the Lord. As a matter of fact, in the time I'm doing this recording, I'm preparing to do another trip to go minister. and It was pretty ex uh, expensive, the two different trips we've done. and We're doing three at the end of this year. And uh, <clears throat> the second one, we're, I, I wanted to celebrate my wife. So I got us a nice resort hotel room on the beach in Mississippi where we were going. My wife's had a virus most of this year in 2022. It began early in January. It started to go away. It came back. started to go away. It came back. And in June, she ended up in an emergency. And they said it's a virus. and It's a dry cough. It's not COVID. There's no fever. There's not, It's a dry cough. And they were on several meds. She spent three days Two, two and a half days in the hospital and all was well up till a few weeks ago another round came it's been about three weeks now as I was praying Friday night at work I really felt like she needs to stay home instead of going with me on this trip not because I don't want her to go but I want her to heal and she was also praying that before I could talk to her Saturday she said I just feel like I need to stay home and allow my body to heal. I was about to take money out of the special savings that I have to put into the ministry account because they were going to be expensive trips. And I felt checked immediately by the Holy Spirit. And I said to my wife, I'm going to take X amount out and put it in. We just had pastor appreciation at the church. And a family came up to me and said, here, we thank you. And the Holy Spirit told me to tell you you're worthy of this. They gave us a beautiful card with the exact amount of money I said I was going to take out of a personal savings to put into the ministry. God has a plan. And we listened to God. When I told my wife I'm going to take X amount out, I mean the Holy Spirit immediately checked me. I heard him said, no, I told you I'm financing everything. And my wife said, are you sure you want to do that? Well, I didn't do it, and God survived, or, or provided, I'm sorry. When we learn to take time to listen to the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I believe they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their mental strength, their physical strength, their spiritual strength, all of the strength that we need to function in every aspect of our life. When we wait upon Him, that's when we're able to do. Paul talked much about man's inner life. Uh, to the church of Ephesians 5, 18 and 20, he writes, Do not be drunk with wine or in excess, but what? Be filled. Filled. That means that's full with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves. To yourself. It's okay to talk to yourself, by the way. Speak to yourself in Psalms. And in hymns, in spiritual song, singing, making mentally in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things. For what? For all things. I have a message coming in a couple of weeks about that. For all things unto God and the Father and the, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The admonition is being filled, being filled with the spirit no one can ever no one ever gets spirit filled and remains full forever i live outside detroit if i fill up my my truck and i want to jump on the interstate 75 and drive to tampa i promise you i'm not going to make it from detroit to tampa without what stopping and refueling my truck our bodies can only go so long and we have to refuel with sleep and we have to refuel with food. Our spiritual bodies can only go so long and we have to refuel with the Word of God, refuel with praise and with worship and refuel with fellowship. I love the scriptures that says, gather together, see, 
I love the corporate worship of church. The corporate worship, because we're coming together, forsake not the assembling. When we come together, we corporately worship, but I can help touch someone and help bring them along. They can help bring me along. But we don't remain full forever. We have to go back and refuel and refuel and refuel and refuel. No man can ever have rest who is not at rest within himself. Mm. We cannot have rest if we are not having rest within ourselves. If our, quote, intercom, I-N-T-E-R-M-O-M, if our intercom, or C-A-L-M, if our intercom is sharing good things of praise and worship, we'll have the rest. It would be well to consider these four points and to begin to apply them to our lives. Their praise, forgiveness, proper exposure, and a healthy intercom. Father, thank you for the opportunity to share the word that you've laid upon my heart. Now I ask you, Holy Spirit, to seal it. Lord, if there's any unforgiveness in us, show it to us that we may forgive. For Lord, today we choose to forgive. We're going to make it a choice. Thank you that you sent your son, Jesus. Thank you for the forgiveness and remission of our sins. Now, as we close and seal down this teaching, I ask you, Holy Spirit, that we be changed by the word you've laid upon my heart. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Again, thank you, Chaplain. God bless each and every one of you. I will see you next week. There you go, guys. That was Dr. Scott's message on this week's episode of Outside of Classroom Wednesdays. It was Take 4, Rest More. Let's get into three more songs to play. We're going to play our last three songs. We'll play two. We'll pray. We'll play the last one. And that one. Our next song is Tears Are a Language by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry, Larry O'Rell and Mike Guest for over 16 years. Enjoy Tears Are a Language. And you've wondered why Tears come into your eyes When burdens seem to be Much more than you can stand But God is standing near He sees your fallen tears Tears are a language that God understands. God sees the tears of a broken hearted soul. He sees your tears and he hears them when they God weeps along with man and takes him by the hand. Tears are a language that God understands. When grief has left it causes tears to flow when things have not turned out the way that you had planned. But God won't forget you. All his promises are true. Tears are a language. 
God understands. God sees the tears of a broken hearted soul. He sees your tears and he hears them when they God understands Tears are a language God There you go, guys. That was Tears Are a Language by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orwell. I actually remember we have four songs, so now we got three more. We'll play two. We'll play, we'll play the last one. Our next song is Breakthrough by none other than Dr. Tom Ray and my friend and worship leader for over 16 years. Enjoy, and I hope you get your breakthrough.
There you go, guys. That was Breakthrough by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Let's get into our next song, and then we'll pray, and then we'll end it with our last song. Our next song is We'll Lift Him Up by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy We'll Lift Him Up by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy We'll Lift Him Up. There you go, guys. That was We'll Lift Him Up by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Let's pray. Lord, we humbly come back before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are God and God alone. That, Lord, when we go through anything, when we go through anything, Lord, that you're there to fix it. No matter what doom and gloom comes in our lives, you are there to fix it. I am one person right now that needs to hear that. 
And I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. I ain't perfect. Nobody is. But I need to get it. Because there's times when I can go through something real bad. And you'd be like, I just failed. I just this. I just that. But I don't realize that even though, yes, I did fail. But God's there to fix it. So we thank you that you are God and God alone. That you are having your way in this ministry. And that you are blessing everyone. Lord, we thank you for blessing everyone. With the sound of my voice when tops. Sounding, blessing them with the heart's desires. Give them the heart's desires as long as they not be what? Selfish. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes, muscular dystrophy. Excuse me. Multiple sclerosis. Heal my mom's arm that's not frozen no more. Heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that's not bad no more. And Lord, heal them from diseases that contracted themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes. Why? When you heal them, shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. <coughs> the mind of scripture says you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door. It says you came through the door. You're all spirit at that moment. He said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger into my side and see that I'm God. What did you do? What did, what did Thomas do? He got on his knees and said, truly, you're the son of God. Then what did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. But those who stop there says, Blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back meaning absolutely anything, they won't have to say have to see it to believe because they'll say, If he did it, then you'll do it again. Because your word again says you're the same God yesterday. No, it says you're the same God yesterday and today. No, it says you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So show them now, Lord. So when they come back meaning absolutely anything, they don't have to say it to see it to believe it. We thank you. We praise you. And we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Boom, boom, boom. Amen. Boom, boom, boom. Amen. 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 With that being said, our last song of the show is All Day and All Night by my friend and guest on the show. The Light Warrior, enjoy all day and all night. All day, watch you all night. Watch you, watch you, love me, my Watch you, know watch you, all day, watch you all night. Watch you, just watch you, love me. Mighty Gabriel came to the prophet Daniel to bring the answer to his prayer. The answer to that his man prayer. of God felt better when he saw the warrior angel Gabriel there. Was there. All day, all night, they were watching over Daniel and they're watching over me all day. Angels are watching over me. An angel came to Peter to open his prison cell that night. You said him he told free. that saint to rise up and walk out and go and make things right. Preach the gospel. They were watching. They were watching. Watching over Peter and they're watching over me. They're watching. 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 watching over me. The Lord's angel came to Joseph in his dream. His warning, it was clear. Herod's after Take you. Mary and the Christ child and get on out of here. You're going to eat. All day, all night, they were watching over Joseph and his family. All day, all night, angels are watching over me. Jesus was full of sorrow in the garden of Gethsemane. His angel strengthened him before he went to the cross and spoke to him of his victory over death and the devil. All day, all night, they were watching over Jesus and they're watching over me. 
all day, all night, angels watching over me, all day, all night, angels watching over you and me, all day, all night, angels watching over you and me. Angels watching over you and me. They're watching over you and me. They're watching. They're watching. Watching over me. Watching over. They're watching. They're watching. Watching over me. They're watching. They're watching. Watching over me, watching over. They're watching, they're watching, watching over me. Watching over you and me. There you go, guys. That was All Day and All Night by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. I want to say, guys, that this has been an awesome show. It's been truly a blessing that Dr. Scott gave us a a quick message for this week, and it was an awesome message. And I want to say thank you guys for tuning in to this week's episode of Outside the Classroom Wednesdays with me, your official host, but... The host of the show, Dr. Scott Mullen, Father Galpi, Worldwide Ministries, Evangelical Christian Churches, and the IAC, which me and the wife will be part of as well. I'm already part of it, but the wife will be a part of it as well. With that being said, two things to remind you. Number one, go to (coughs) download the app. It's phenomenal. You can do all these wonderful things on that app. It's called Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Available on Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the App Toyed Market. Also, guys, be aware, ask your Alexa device, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal, and she'll say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. You can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. We also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal, and she'll say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our show for today. As always, this is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust the Lord in all your ways. Two, lean not to your own understandings. And three, in all of your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Thank you. And good night. <laughs>